Hey everybody, welcome to the live chat. Thank you so much for joining me for yet another week. I'm telling you the pandemic isn't great, but being home is nice and being able to commit to something regular like this has been a lot of fun and a lot, a lot of good for me too. I've got to tell you, got to be honest that um, when I start right before I click the go live button, I get nervous. I get like this pit in my stomach and I'm like, oh, what if something goes wrong? What if I say the wrong thing? And then I realize that's just probably how all us quilters feel sometimes, right? When we're learning something new. So thanks for being on this journey with me as I'm learning all this new software and I'm excited to be on this journey with you as you're learning uh, machine quilting with rulers. Or if you already know how to machine quilt with rulers, learning some new designs. So either way, we're gonna do it all together, right? <laughs> In this live chat, I'm gonna go over some basics for rulers, um, just like the very beginner, like how to hold it, just a nice little sampling of how to do it on a sewing machine and a long arm, because on Monday, the challenge starts, the videos are gonna start coming out, and so we're gonna get right to it with straight edge rulers, and I'm gonna do um, some different designs. So if you're a little nervous about it, this will give you the weekend to kind of warm up a little bit and get a little bit more comfortable with it. So. I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna answer your questions, of course, I love doing that. Um, normally what I do is I hop on the live about 30 minutes before it starts, and I like to, to read the questions on there and write them down, and so um, if you're ever on here early, you can chat. I love seeing where everybody is from and just kind of connecting that way. Because once we go live, I feel like I'm just talking, well, I know I'm talking to you, but it's kind of a screen, so lots of fun. And then uh, at the very end, I'm going to announce a giveaway. So to celebrate the new challenge, I've got a pretty good giveaway. So hang around to the end and you'll hear all about that. Now, as I'm learning how to do this go live and I really want it to be a really cool experience for everybody, I'm gonna try something a little different. I have some video that I'm gonna show while I'm talking through it. So I practice and I hope it goes right. I'm sure it will, but if it doesn't, just be patient and I'll, I'll be right back. So let's talk about beginner quilting for sewing machines, right? So one of the fun things about teaching this kind of thing is that everybody has a different machine, but there's two main groups, right? Sewing machine and long arm. The designs will go together exactly the same. However, the, the mechanics of it are just a little different. Now, this is a little tricky to talk through. It's a little not tricky to talk through, it's something I want to make sure you understand before we start. So I'm gonna kind of go over the two and then if you have questions, you can definitely leave them in the chat. And I've already written some down that people have already asked. Okay, so first, let's talk about quilting on a sewing machine. One of the best things to come out, I think, for sewing machine quilting, machine quilting on a sewing machine, is ruler feet, the ability to use rulers. And so this is giving us a whole new world of design possibilities and like I've said already before in these live chats, it's something that will grow with you, right? So whether you're brand new, whether you've been doing it for a while, it's something that you can kind of take with you that whole way. So before, before you get started, one thing you have to understand is that ruler is really just a guide. It's a, it's a template, it's, it's helpful, but it's not meant to give you perfect straight lines. And in my classes, I always spend a lot of time reiterating that because we're not going for straight, we're going for straight-ish. We're using a little help, a little guideline. But when you sit at your machine, let's say you're gonna just free motion quilt. Well, when you're free motion quilting without your ruler, you have the most control when you have one hand on either side of that needle. And that's how you maneuver the quilt. And one of my really bad habits when I'm machine quilting is I forget to reposition my hands and pretty soon I'm, I'm using my elbows. So repositioning your hands is something you should be doing already when you're machine quilting. And we're gonna make sure you do that with your sewing machine when you're quilting with rulers as well. So let's look at this little video I have. So first I wanna show you, you can work from all sides of the foot. So depending on how your machine is set up, sometimes there's something that blocks it, um, but if, if it's available, you can work from any side. And so as you're practicing and as you're working through, try a bunch of those different positions, those different hand positions, because eventually you'll find one that works really well for you. So once you decide the positioning that you like, you've got your ruler lined up, what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically use your ruler like a handle. You're just gonna push down and then move the machine or move the quilt along that ruler. So this is kind of where I think sometimes we get nervous, right? Because we're getting ready to start, we're, we're clicking that go live button, it's, it's happening, right? We're gonna push down and then over. So you're kind of using it like a handle, but this hand, even though 
it's not holding a ruler, it's still helping push that quilt through. And you're gonna see that here in a little bit how I kind of use my other hand to help do that. So I talked about hand position last week. You can tell I'm quilting on the left side here. That's just because that's how I prefer it. But I could have definitely used the other side of the foot. It doesn't matter. But once you have it in your position, you're gonna push down and you're gonna just move it along that ruler. Now, keeping it in contact, that's something you'll get better with practice. But the one thing I wanna point out is here, I'm getting past my hands, right? My hands are no longer on either side of the needle, they're beyond it. And then I don't have as much control there and that's where we're gonna see things like the ruler moving and you know, slipping around and sometimes the quilt you know, getting kind of messed up. So at that point, I need to stop and I need to either reposition my hands if it's a longer ruler or reposition the ruler. So if we could just get that good habit built before you learn anything else, that will really, really help you on your, your free motion quilting uh, journey there. So once I get past it, then I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna reposition the ruler, and then get my hands again back on both sides of that needle. And you can see there I'm pushing and continuing on. So it's not one long line, right? It's a lot of starting and stopping and repositioning, which can kind of, for me, I feel like it's slowing me down sometimes, just a little bit but it really does give me the best results. Now let's talk about horizontal lines now. So we've talked about vertical. I love quilting vertical lines, especially on my sewing machine, because I can use my whole like, body to push that whole quilt. Uh, I struggle with horizontal lines, so whenever possible I try to work it out so I'm going vertical. But I digress, that's off topic. When you're quilting horizontal lines, you're still gonna follow the same principles. You still wanna have that needle in between your fingertips or your hands. You wanna have it kind of control right there. Now, if you notice, look how I'm holding the ruler. I kinda of have my fingers splayed this way. I have a ruler right here I can hold as an example. That's gonna give me more or the most that I can, you know, splayed so I can have the most area that I can quilt. Even though I'm repositioning, I don't wanna do it if it's not necessary. So I'm not holding it like this. My fingers aren't really tight together. They're kinda of splayed out. You could also hold your hand off to the side as well. That's a, totally a you know, personal preference. It doesn't matter how you hold the ruler as long as you only quilt within your fingertips. So that means you know, what, however you hold it, you need to make sure your hand feels comfortable. So here I'm showing, well, you can actually put your fingers on both sides of the ruler. Maybe I don't want just one hand on it, one hand over here. Maybe for a longer ruler, I have both hands on it. That's fine as long as I'm pushing down and moving along it. But now you can see, I'm like, actually, no, I'm just gonna use the one hand. And what my right hand is doing is it's helping kind of pull that quilt along. Because even though I have that ruler to use like a, a handle on the quilt, it's still just one hand, right? I need to use both of my hands to incorporate that. So there you can see I'm repositioning and then continuing on. So one thing in my videos and my tutorials, when I'm showing them, I really kind of edit out a lot of that repositioning mostly because it, it would get really boring and a 10 minute video would be a lot longer and I'm trying to keep it short and interesting. But just know that as you're quilting, there's gonna be a lot of smoothing out the quilt and repositioning the ruler and making sure that it's straight. Because if we have this template or if we have this you know, guide, then we're definitely want to you know, take advantage of that. So not doing just one long line, I'm really taking my time and repositioning. Um, I just noticed a question come up from Sherry. She said, are your feed dogs up or down when you're going sideways? Well, when I'm machine quilting, whether with a ruler or not, it's gonna be either up or down, it's gonna be covered. So I'll put a Supreme slider on, and then if I remember to drop them, I'll drop them, sometimes I forget, but as long as they're covered up. And at that point, they're not gonna be in the way to go sideways. But if you start quilting and you realize, like, this is really difficult, check your feed dogs, because they could be up, and maybe you don't have a Supreme slider. On a side note, I filmed a whole episode of the Midnight Quilt Show where I was quilting a quilt, a little demo section with the feed dogs up. And later on, I thought, that's why it was so hard. Oh, so it happens to all of us. Anyway, back to the video. So I'm quilting along and I'm repositioning, again, only working within the fingertips. So taking my time and working along that ruler. In my classes, it's really fun because sometimes I'll go up you know, behind students and be like, move your hand, move your hand. But this is kind of like keeping the rotary cutter Close when you're not using it, right? So you have to kind of get it ingrained and then you'll, you'll have it from, then on out, from there on out. 
Um, so that's the end of the little video, but I will tell you a couple things about quilting on a sewing machine that you might notice. So if you have a ruler in one hand and you have your other hand without, you might notice the quilt starting to turn, especially if your dominant hand is not holding the ruler. That's normal. You're pushing one a little bit harder than the other. N doesn't matter. Just make sure you reposition and continue on. That's why the reference lines on our rulers are so important. Because even if my quilt is turned a little bit, you know, I can still use those reference lines to keep, you know, even on the quilts. So don't, you know, don't be just uh, surprised by that. One question that comes up a lot when it comes to quilting on a sewing machine with rulers is how do you deal with bigger quilts? So the panel quilt that I'm working on, it's about, I can't remember now, 48 by 58 something. It's not huge, but it's not a little quilt sandwich. I've got to make my positioning and my maneuvering. This is exactly where having your hands on both sides of that needle will come in handy that, or be necessary because you need that control. Beyond that, you need to get all the bulk of your quilt up so you're not fighting it because using a ruler, while it does feel like a handle and you kind of you know, can manipulate it, you don't have quite a good grip on the quilt as you would without it. So definitely um, remember those couple things. One last thing I'll say about quilting on a sewing machine with rulers a bad habit that I do a lot, I'm really bad at this, is I'm so ex like excited to go, I'll, I'll kind of like start moving before the, the needles even really started, and I'll get little jagged lines in my straight lines or my repositioning. If you watch closely in the tutorials, you'll see it a couple times, and I'm like, oh, well, it is what it is. Um, so really kind of be aware that you're going before you start moving. But at the end of the day, you know what I'm going to say. As long as it's finished, it's fine. And once you step back, it's going to look great. Um, most of you probably aren't editing and, and looking real close at it anyway. So, so very, very good. So that's going to be the basics of hand, you know, holding the ruler. I know this probably opens up more questions like diagonal lines or anything like that. But if you take these little basics, you can apply it to those to different positions, just taking your time and staying between your fingertips. Um, we will get into diagonal lines on Monday when we have the first video. We're going to be going all different directions. So definitely get comfortable with holding the ruler and moving around before we start on Monday on your sewing machine because we're going we're gonna to definitely dive into that. Okay, so now let's talk about using the long arm. So on a long arm, we have a little bit of a different problem. It's not, I guess, not a problem. It's just a different concern. So when I'm working on a long arm, I'm moving the machine and not the quilt. And I will say, sometimes it takes me just a second when I'm flipping back and forth, like, oh, okay, that's what I'm moving here. So I'm not pushing down on the handle, and I'm not using it, <laughs> or pushing down on the ruler. I'm not using it like a, a handle. I'm holding it firmly, but I can't push down because what's going to happen? That ruler base that's under there is keeping, like, that area kind of steady and in, in the same, you know, height. But if I push down, that ruler base won't move, and then my machine won't move. And then I have this tug of war going on. Now this is something that even if we were live together, I couldn't, I couldn't show you. You're going to have to figure this out. Basically, you want enough to have control of your ruler, but not so much that you can't move your machine. And you'll, you'll kind of figure out what that is. But just like a sewing machine, we're still going to quilt between our fingertips, even more so on a long arm. Now a ruler base, for those of you who don't know, it's like an extended table that kind of goes on the bottom of your um, long arm, so kind of like it would act like the, the table that your machine is on. Well, it's only about so big. So if I have a long ruler and my hand's over here and my needle's over there, my ruler is gonna wobble. And not only will my lines not look good, but that is exactly when it'll fly and hit the needle and all sorts of things happen. So definitely, definitely between your fingertips on the long arm. On a sewing machine, I'll let them kind of get away with it in a class a little bit. I'll kind of remind them, but on a long arm, it's so important because you could break the ruler or break your needle, and it's just never fun when that happens. Hand position is still the same kind of thing. When I work from the front or a horizontal line, I kind of splay my fingers, and I use my thumb. I know this is not really helping you guys, but I use my thumb to kind of hold on to the ruler like this, so my thumb acts kind of like a, a, an extra guide. But the thing I want to point out is the fingertips, right? They really need to be close to the edge you're quilting, because if they're not, your ruler's gonna kind of come back a little bit. But thankfully, this is a little bit older video, thankfully they're back enough, my fingers are back enough that I'm not gonna get hit by a needle. So that's definitely the hand position I'm using. But as I quilt, I'm putting my ruler in place, quilting along, and then repositioning. So I know it's a little bouncy, but stopping, repositioning, and continuing on. 
Okay, so let's talk about this. Why am I stopping the machine? Well, I need to reposition the ruler, and I'm not using a stitch regulator here. I prefer quilting in manual, so when I'm quilting, I need to stop to continue on. So I'm hitting that button a lot throughout the course of a ruler quilt. If you're using a stitch regulator, you don't have to do that. I do suggest it though, if you're new to quilting and you're using a stitch regulator, this is for both of you, uh, sewing machine and long arm, if you're going to change direction, if I'm gonna go horizontal to vertical, go ahead and turn off your machine so you can reposition it. Because even though it's not stitching, it's on, and if it moves, you'll get a jagged line, or maybe, you know, even worse, maybe it hits your ruler or something. So you can take that for whatever you want, um, but if you're using a stitch regulator, changing direction, I, I would just stop and get, get it positioned right and then continue on. If you're in manual, you don't really have that choice. And I'm gonna reposition my hands, even if I have this much left to go. I mean, that's where, because I still need that control, even if it's a little bit. Now let's look at the vertical. So same thing, right? I kind of hold my hand like this on the side. You can hold it any which way you want, as long as it feels comfortable. And this goes for, for everybody. The thing is, if you're doing it for a little bit, you have to do it for a long time, or you know, a lot, and you don't want your hand hurting or getting sore or fatigued, because that's also when mistakes can happen. So however you position your hand, make sure that you're comfortable and that's not tweaking your wrist or anything. Now, when I'm working vertically, same thing, I'm putting my ruler down, I'm keeping my fingers close, but not too close, and then I'm running the machine along that ruler. Again, it's gonna take practice to get used to that point of contact where they kind of nudge up to each other, and we talked about that, I think it was last week. You know, we want those to be in contact but not pushing each other. That, that's kind of like a, a process you'll have to feel out, but you'll get, you'll get really good at it after a while. So again, repositioning, as I go. Now I took that same clip from a different camera angle and you can see it just a little bit differently. So here the problem I have is that my machine loves to move around, right? It, it just loves to flow and that's what's fun about a long arm. I mean, it's not like we ever sit at our sewing machine and that quilt just runs away from you, right? You're like dragging that thing through there. So when I'm ruler quilting, I really have to be aware of where I'm going and that point of contact. And then also giving myself a little bit of grace that if it's not perfect, it's gonna be fine. So we'll just kind of see that finishing out. Another thing that's a little different about a sewing machine as opposed to a long arm, or a long arm as opposed to a sewing machine, we can't change the um, orientation of our quilt as easily, right? I mean, we technically could turn it, but it's a pain. So unlike a sewing machine, remember when I said I like to quilt vertically, so whenever I can, I try to work the quilt out that way. That's not happening on a long arm. So I have to get comfortable quilting all different directions. That also means I've got to get comfortable working from other sides of the foot too. So there are times when I have to work from the back, even though I don't like it. There's times I have to kind of work at an angle, even though I don't like it. So you're really going to have to get more comfortable with all the different directions on that. But you will. Just take a little practice and you will. It'll, it'll be easy. So. Another thing we'll really see this come to play is when we, start, when we start talking about motifs. So when we're talking about taking a shape and rotating it, oh, sewing machine's so much easier, right? Because I can turn the quilt if I need to. On a long arm, we're gonna have to do all the hand positions. So just keep that in mind, um, but it's a good thing, right? This is, this is gonna make us better. So again, pointing out as that ruler's there, I'm gonna keep it in between my fingertips. Now, diagonal lines, same thing. Just like I talked about on the sewing machine, you know, we can work from those different angles. I will say, when it comes to diagonal lines on a long arm, it's a whole different thing. On a sewing machine, it's not too much different, right? You're just plotting it where you wanna go and quilting along it. On a long arm, we're dealing with two sets of wheels. One that's going horizontal and one that's going vertical. So if I want a diagonal line, I've gotta engage both of those at the same time. If you want to know what that's like, that's like quilting a, or drawing a diagonal line with an Etch-a-Sketch. I know that's getting to be an old toy. Most people won't know what that is. Well, you will. My kids won't know what that is. But remember how hard that was? Diagonal lines <clears throat> are going to be like that as well on the long arm. So you really have to move with purpose and move kind of fluidly, not so timidly. Because what will happen is you'll engage one direction and you'll get a little bobble. Now, does that mean that even when you master rulers that you won't get those little jags in your diagonal lines? No, it's just going to happen. Every once in a while, one of those wheels kind of goes off, off the rails. So not really off the rails, but just goes off on its own. So diagonal lines are a little bit more different. They're gonna, a little bit more tricky. They're going to take a little bit more practice, but I promise 
just a little bit of practice and you'll, you'll be good at it. So that's pretty much the main thing, main difference about quilting on a long arm. Again, the, the basics are there though. Quilt within your fingertips, take your time, and reposition often. We will definitely see this when we get to wavy lines in the second week because when we're quilting along waves, we're gonna have to move our hands along. And so getting used to that now, is just gonna really help you when we get to the second week. Okay, so that's just like the beginner basics. So let me move this off of there. I'm gonna grab a quick drink real quick. My mouth is dry. Um, it's, but so hopefully when you sit at your machine later, you, if you're not comfortable with it, hopefully that'll give you a little bit of, um, a little bit of encouragement. The thing to remember though, it just takes a little practice. Don't be scared of it. Just try it out and, and keep going and eventually you'll find what works for you and what works for your um, personality. All right, so let's talk about questions and answering things that have come up. Um, just popped over and I saw Brian's, uh, do I have a tutorial on how to load a long arm machine? No, but I just got a long arm in my new filming studio. So I'm gonna be able to do stuff like that very soon. Very excited. Um, this new area, I think I told you last week, I have a dedicated filming room, filming studio, and I got my long arm section over there. So, so excited to do that. Stay tuned. It'll be definitely coming. Okay, questions. I like to make my notes. Um, somebody asked, I didn't note the name, which thread color will we start with in the challenge? Uh, because they want to make sure they wind their bobbins. Love how like prepared that is. I wouldn't even think about that. The denim color we'll be using most, that dark brown, and then we'll be talking, doing peppermint and turquoise. So if you purchase the custom panel that goes with the challenge and you purchase the coordinating thread, that's what I'm talking about. If you're just, you know, using whatever, just ignore that question. But um, I know that last challenge, there was some questions about what thread color to put where. So I'll definitely make sure in the handouts or the diagrams to be more clear about that. So. If you want to wind your bobbins, you can start winding your denim color to be perfect. Although I will tell you, I have gotten into, I don't know, I'm not even going to call it a bad habit anymore. It's just pretty amazing. I use pre-wounds and so I'll just use like whatever color the top is, I'll just use a neutral of that color. So if I were quilting the dark blue part of the panel, I would just do like a dark gray or something. So um, a lot of fun. Rebecca asked the question, how do you get your tension set? Ah, oh, tension. That's just one of those things that's just frustrating sometimes. When you're thinking about good or bad tension, we're just talking about where those threads meet and they meet in the middle of the quilt. When they don't meet in the middle of the quilt, that's bad tension. So as you're, if you can understand how the tension of thread works, then you can think, okay, if I see my bottom thread on the top, that means I need to loosen my top. If I see, if it's hanging down, I need to tighten it back up. So. Unfortunately, tension is something that's different for every machine, every, um, every type of fabric, every thread. So you're just gonna have to work with it and make those adjustments, tiny adjustments as you go, okay? So I wish I could give you that shiny, perfect answer. And if I could, I would, I would have a really good YouTube following then, um, but it's just gonna be specific to your situation. Sorry about that. Liz asked, where can I find the weekly supplies and itinerary and everything I need to know about the challenge you can find all of that at FMQ, Free Motion Quilting, fmqchallenge.com. There's also links in the description box below. So after the chat isn't live, it will go up as a regular video. And in the comments, you can get the links to all that. And I have the schedule up and, and all, all the information that you need. Um, each challenge has its own little landing page where you can find things specific to that challenge. Some of the older challenges, everything's not quite there yet. I'm still moving in, you know. Um, but while you're on the website, you can check out all the previous challenges. I've done several, and you can do any of them in any order. So maybe you're bored this weekend. You can work through a challenge real quick. <laughs> um, Sandra asked a question, how can I, or tips for echoing half circles? And then after I wrote it, I noticed a lot of people chimed in and an helped answer that. So thank you. I, I think it's really fun on the live chat where we're kind of, you know, um, interacting with each other. That's what's going to give us this kind of community feeling. Um, and so somebody suggested some different rulers. And I didn't know if she, you were specifically asking like how to you know, use a half circle echo ruler or like freehand. And no matter what way you're going with it, I would say when it comes to echoing, especially curves, I'm aiming for smooth, not perfect. What that means is if I'm going away too much, going over too much from that circle, I'm just gonna kind of smooth it back in. I'm not gonna make a big change and then come back. We'll see smooth lines more as perfect than even if it's, you know, even if it's not. So just aim for smooth. 
And what you can do is, let's say you're echoing and there's just too much space, you can throw another echo inside of there. Or let's say you've echoed it and you don't like how it looks, you can throw another couple echoes around it. So just keep putting stuff around it till it goes away. It only works in quilting though, but it's, a, it's one of my favorite tricks. All right, Roxanne said, how do you decrease thread bulk when lots of lines meet at the same place? Well, if you're concerned about that, let's say you're doing something that really comes back and the thread kind of builds up on top of each other, using a thinner thread is what ultimately is gonna do it. A thinner thread or a thread color that matches the quilt top. So the bulkiness of it doesn't affect anything, it just draws your attention, right? Our, our brains are attracted to um, contrast to something different. And so if we have all this quilting and all of a sudden we have a thread buildup over here, that's what we're gonna notice. So we need to kind of distract from that by either thinner thread, which won't be as noticeable, or a color that blends in. But just know that you can use that, you know, use that uh, thing to your advantage too. If you want to show off something, then you can have a little bit more thread build up. So it's definitely interesting using that idea to highlight or hide parts of your quilts. I like to joke, I, I don't think I'm better quilter than anybody else. I'm just really good at hiding my mistakes. And I think that's what's, what's helped me, um, you know, do what I do. So good question. All right, Nikki, she said, uh, said can you use a darning foot with rulers? Um, their man sewing machine manufacturer doesn't make a ruler foot. This is so tricky. I feel like I'm in a bad position. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you can technically use a darning foot. Is it possible? Yeah, sure, you can do it. Um, if, but you have to be very careful because that foot is so thin, it's really easy to slide over it. And you slide over that foot and you hit it with a needle, it's gonna break the needle and it could throw your machine out of time and it could break your needle. And like I say, sometimes you can pee your pants. It's just not fun. Um, I will say there are aftermarket ruler feet that you can buy. So maybe checking with your sewing machine manufacturer, going to you know your local shop, asking, kind of doing that research, I'm sure you can find something you can put on there. But all things considered, if you can't, just you don't, there's no possible way, be very careful, be very, very careful, right? So yes, it is technically possible. I don't suggest it, but I could see if that's the only option, then I guess that's all, all you can do. So sorry to not have better answer for that. All right, Lori, best question ever, wins the gold star. How to train, how should she train her dog and or hubby to do dinner so that they can cook and she can quilt all the time? I don't know, but once you figure it out, I would love that. I'd love to know. I don't have dogs, but I have goats. And I feel like, I don't know if they're as trainable. Actually, I do have two dogs outside. I'll have to train them. Anyway, sorry, I don't, I've got nothing for you on that one. Um, Debbie, Debbie said she gets a skipped stitch every now and then. So this is the last written one I have and I'll kind of look through the chat. Um, she's a skipped stitch every now and then. Is it the machine? Well, it's hard to know without more information. If it's happening randomly, not super calm often, I probably wouldn't even worry about it. Um, but if you're wondering what's happening, look to see, is it happening in the same place of a design? Does it always happen in the points? Does it always happen when I'm going left? Does it always happen when I'm going right? Is it always in this fabric? Um, lot, a lot of times these common, or these common things like skip stitches and tension, it's like one small thing is causing it, but there's like a hundred small things that it could be. So start deducing down like when is it happening? Where is it going? So if you said, um, De Debbie said, well, it always happens when I come out of a point. Well, that could be the machine, but it could also be maybe, maybe you just move differently out of the point. If you say, well, it always happens in this fabric, in this block that I use, maybe it's a painted fabric where the needle just can't go through as fast. So um, that's about the best answer I have for that, unfortunately. But if it's only happened every once in a while, I think it'd be fine. As long as the stitch construction isn't compromised. As long as the stitch is good, it's good. It'll hold. So, um, all right. What time on Monday for the videos? So I've been kind of getting in the habit of releasing them in the morning. So usually around between seven to 9 a.m. Um, that way if you're working, you can maybe get it in before you work. That's central time. I know for my friends overseas, by the way, lots of overseas visitors on the chat. I love it. Technology is so great, right? That I can you know, chat with people from Spain and Germany and Ireland. 
Um, so it will be on YouTube and it will stay there indefinitely. So you can definitely check that out uh, whenever you want. I am kind of toying with the idea of doing one of the premieres. So YouTube has where you can premiere a video and chat while it, while it goes live. So maybe, maybe in the middle of the challenge, I'm still trying to get everything finalized before Monday. So we'll see, but I'll, I'll definitely keep you updated if, if anything changes, but it's gonna be in the mornings uh, as of right now. Um, a couple of things about the, uh, the challenge. First of all, as you know, we have the custom panel. You don't have to have it to participate in the challenge. I love making the videos free to use. That way, you know, everybody can participate. But I am so thankful that so many people do purchase the panels because that does help, you know, offset the, the challenge or filming the videos. And so for all of you that have ordered panels but haven't got them yet, I promise they're coming. I promise, I promise, we're, we are working just as feverishly as we can to fill orders. And so even if you ordered it and it doesn't quite get there before Monday, don't worry, it will be there soon, very soon, and you can do it as soon as you get your panel. So I know we're all anxious to start, but these videos will be live. You know, they'll be out there indefinitely. So, so please uh, don't be too mad at us. We are working as hard as we can. So thankful though, um, it's a definitely a good problem to have. So um, Jane says, my hubby doesn't cook, but he knows how to make cereal. That's great. Um, sometimes we have to stop quilting and eat. It just is what it is, right? My bad habit though is getting delivery and I've got to stop doing that, but you know, it's kind of fun. All right, so I'm just kind of skimming through the questions real quick. Next Monday will the challenge. Next Thursday, our Thursday chat, our live chat will be about the video. So now we're not gonna, we're gonna be kind of focusing on the previous week. So if there was like a tip that I had to cut out or something that I thought of later, we'll kind of go over variations. We'll kind of deep diaper, diaper. We're not, de we're not diving into a diaper. We'll dive deeper into the design and usually how those work after the video comes out and I do a live chat, I'll do quilted samples and variations and answer your questions. So it's kind of a good way to touch base. And so we'll still be doing that every Thursday um, after each video. So looking forward to that. All right, at the beginning, I promised you a giveaway. We're gonna celebrate the brand new challenge starting up. Um, to me, it's always kind of crazy. Like the, the first day comes Monday and I'm like, I've been playing this thing forever and now it's out there. So it's kind of a, a big deal for me. So I am going to do a giveaway and what I'm giving away is pretty awesome. It's the quilted sample. So before I start a challenge, I load a panel and I just quilt. I just do whatever I want. I don't think about necessarily, I don't overthink the designs because sometimes it'll change. So this isn't maybe exactly how the challenge panel will look at, but this was my, my, my quilted playtime. And so I'm actually gonna do two giveaways. All right, so pay attention. The first giveaway is for just the panel, not quilted, just a plain panel. You're ready to go practice. How you're gonna win that or enter to win is after the video is done, the chat is done, in the description box, there'll be a link to enter. So you'll, you'll click on that link and just put in your email and then it will enter you to win. I'm gonna pick a winner and announce it on the next Thursday chat. So in the past I've done giveaways, this is the easiest way I can think to do it and to pick a winner. So one regular panel. However, this panel, giveaway number two, this quilted panel will be given away to somebody that has purchased a panel from me, whether it was previous or now, like so from, from the time that this challenge was announced till, till Thursday, if you purchase a panel or if you have purchased a panel, you're gonna be entered automatically to win that. So I'll announce the winner on Thursday as well. So two ways to win. One, you don't have to purchase anything, just enter. And one, if you did purchase or you do purchase, you can win this quilt. Now I do have to make a little bit of a caveat. It's not bound, so and I intend to maybe bind it, but let's be real, it, it might not come to you bound. But if that's a deal breaker, let me know and I can try to, t try to figure that out. So definitely excited to celebrate the new challenge um, and doing the giveaway to, to start it off right. And again, I'll announce those winners on Thursday. Now, and they'll be notified via email too. You don't have to be on the live chat to win. You'll just be notified. So again, I'm gonna send out an email tomorrow or Monday, depending on how it goes. Um, with a link as well. So if you're like, I can't find the description box below, then you can just wait for the email and I will do, be doing giveaways, I think weekly, just like that. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Well, 
I thank you so much for hanging out with me for 35 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever. I know that we're all busy and I don't, I don't take it lightly that you would spend your time with me, so I appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Go practice your quilting because on Monday, the challenge is starting. And so I will see you then. Happy quilting.